Welcome to Romney Marsh Community Church's online candlelit carol service. Hello and welcome to Romney Marsh Community Church and our first ever online candlelit carol service. Now as we go through the Christmas story I hope that you'll join with us perhaps if you've got a Bible you might want to have that with you to follow the readings that we have and turn the volume up on your uh, TV or your laptop or whatever it is that you're watching so that you can sing along to the carols and uh, we know that we can't be singing together but there is a sense where we can sing together and uh, I would encourage you to do that uh, this evening but uh, please do enjoy what uh, we've put together for you and let's pray now and ask God to be with us let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you that we despite these difficult conditions, can meet together like this and remember again, through this carol service, the Christmas story of you coming into the world as the Word and the Light. And Lord, we pray now that you would be with us. Fill us afresh, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and just help us to get a fresh glimpse of who you are and what you have done for us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ, her little child. 
The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 and Micah chapter 5 verses 2 to 5. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. The reading is from Isaiah 9, verse 2, and then verses 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For then to us a child is born, to us a son is given, 
and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and for ever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let us pray. We give you our thanks, O God our Father, for the gift of your Son Jesus Christ, whose coming to this world was proclaimed by the prophets and who was born for us in lowliness and poverty at Bethlehem. As we celebrate his birth through singing carols and hearing your words of scripture, fill our hearts with your own joy and peace so that we may welcome him as our Saviour. And as we relive the events of that first Christmas, may we prepare ourselves for Christ's promised second coming, when he will come again in power and in glory to gather in all those who believe and trust in him. Heavenly Father, this has been a difficult and challenging year for all of us. And we pray for all those who are suffering from the results of this pandemic for those who grieve for the loss of family and friends, and for those whose Christmas will not be filled with comfort and joy, the homeless, the hungry, those with relationship difficulties, and the many unemployed who see no future hope. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the production and rollout of the COVID vaccines which have started to be given. We thank you for the dedication and skilled work of all the scientists and doctors who have enabled this to be produced and manufactured in a shorter time than usual. We pray especially for the developing world that finance and means will be provided so that the poorer nations may have equal access to the vaccines. Also that the vaccines that require less complicated cold chain supply lines may soon be available for use in the UK and these developing countries. We pray that people will be sensible over Christmas despite the relaxation of guidelines using moderation and patience that there will not be a spike in numbers in January with more illness and deaths. We also remember our loved ones who are no longer with us and whose memories we cherish, especially at this Christmas tide. And we pray for our nation at this time, for our government and politicians who have difficult decisions to make. Give them the wisdom, discernment and vision which we so desperately need as this year comes to its end. And may the spirit of hope fill our hearts as we anticipate the coming new year. And so we sum up all of our prayers in the words that Jesus taught us, and we invite you to join in with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so may the love of the everlasting Father enfold us, the peace of the Prince of Peace be upon us, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us all, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, 
a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace amongst those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, 
The shepherds said one to another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Good morning, sir. What can I do you for? We've got a lot of sales on. We, we always do after Christmas. Hmm. Interesting headgear, sir. Hmm. Sir? I'm looking for frankincense. Ah, oh, that will be the horror section, sir. Uh, straight down to the end here, turn right, and then left, and uh, you'll, find, you'll find it on your left. And there's some interesting bargains, sir, uh, since Halloween's finished. I beg your pardon. I said frankincense, not Frankenstein. Oh, pardon. Oh, I, I, I do beg your pardon, sir. I, 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 I do apologise. Yes, we, we, we have quite a good selection of frankincense. Some, some very pretty bottles, too. Is it... Uh, is it for a lady, any particular colour? It's not for a lady, it's for a little boy. A little boy? Oh, um, maybe a plastic bottle then, <laughs> in case he drops it. No, a simple plain glass bottle will be perfect, thank you. Huh. A simple plain glass bottle? It is then, sir. There you are. Mm. Thank you. Could you just um, pay on the main desk over there, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Frankincense for a little boy? A bit extravagant, if you ask me. Oh, good morning, sir. How can I help you? Are you looking for anything in particular, sir? The hat department, maybe? Ma. Mm. Pardon, sir? Ma. Oh, um, oh dear, sir, um, I, 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 I just have to get to someone else to help me, sir. Just, just, just a moment. Are you not allowed to sell me myrrh? It's not a drug, you know. Oh. Myrrh is very useful. Tell you, Mercer. I thought you had a speech impediment. Really? Do beg your pardon, sir. I do apologise. Yes, we have quite a selection of myrrh in some very interesting packaging. Would you be wanting it wrapped, sir? Uh, bows, ribbons? Mm. Just its own plain packaging will do. Thank you. Oh, just its own plain packaging. Really, sir, is it not for anybody special then? Oh yes, a very special boy, very special. Oh. Plain packaging there it is then, sir. Thank you. Please pay at the main desk over there and thank you, sir. Good night. I don't care how special. Myrrh for a boy? What's wrong with a football? Good morning, sir. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Hmm? Is there a party going on somewhere around here? No. Well, it's just that I've had similarly attired men coming in already this morning. 
I am a magus. A magic man? That's wonderful. Nice to be of service to you. Would you like the children's department? I'm not a magic man. I am a magus. One of the magi. Oh, I do apologise, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm so sorry, Your Honour, Your Highness. How can I help you? I wish to purchase gold. Gold? Um, bracelet, uh, maybe? A, a ring? A, a necklace? Mm -hmm. Just coins would be wonderful. Thank you. Just coins? I don't suppose you want them wrapped in any particular way either, do you? No, a single, a single bag will suffice. Thank you. And can I guess that they're for a special little boy? Well, yes. Thank you, sir. Could you pay over at the main desk there, please? And thank you again, sir. Thank you. Just like London buses. You wait ages for one, and then three come along in quick succession. Special little boy. Wonder who this boy is? I'd love to meet him. Maybe I can find out about him.
This is a reading from Matthew 2, 1 to 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, the Christ, where was he going to be born? They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When the star, they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The reading is John chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, thank you to everyone that's taken part so far. Now, we've heard lots of readings about the Christmas story, some predicting the coming of Jesus into the world, some tell us who and when and where and how it all happened. But the last reading that we had was a little bit different, but it's always included in carol services. Now, I don't know whether you've ever thought about that. It's got some of the most beautiful words that you find in the whole of the Bible. But how does it fit into the Christmas story? Now. Matthew and Luke, they tell us about how Jesus was conceived and how he was born. They tell us about where and when he was born. They also tell us about who else was involved uh, in the whole part of the Christmas story, the original Christmas story. But John gives us a different perspective on the whole event. It's like broad brush strokes that he's, he's giving us there that encompasses all of time and humanity. But John's account is still this Christmas story, but without the mechanics of how it all happened. Now, if you think of a, a mince pie, for instance, um, a recipe book tells you how to make a mince pie. It tells you what ingredients to put in, how to mix them all together, how to bake it and how long you've got to cook it for and all those things. But then if you think of a different sort of book, maybe one that's on the, the traditions of Christmas, and that, uh, you, and you look up there mince pies, well, that might tell you about why they were made in the first place. Uh, it might tell you, for instance, uh, something I found out this week is that originally they had mince meat in them. Uh, and I think it was during the Victorian times when they just started to put dried fruit in them instead. Uh, but they kept the same name. And it would tell you about the traditions to go with mince pies and uh, the things that surround them and the significance of mince pies in people's lives. Now, both books will tell us about mince pies, but they will tell us a very different aspect of a mince pie's history and all the rest of it and how to make them. They are different, uh, written from a different perspective. And so we see that with Matthew and Luke writing one perspective on the birth of Jesus and John writing a different perspective. So we're going to look at two phrases that John uses in those first 14 verses of chapter 1 of John's Gospel. And the first phrase is the phrase true light. Now that's mentioned nine times. The word light is mentioned nine times in that reading. And the second one is the, the phrase the word. And that's mentioned four times in that. And they're, they're important words that John uses. So let's have a look at this first bit. And if you've got a Bible with you there, maybe you'd like to have it open at John chapter 1, where it says in verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. 
And this verse echoes something that, that has been spoken of in the past. John just didn't come up with this idea, you know, sort of out of his head like that. What he was doing was he was saying, look, you know you've heard about this in the past. Well, this is what's actually happening. And so another reading that we had this evening came from Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. And it says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And John is describing that Jesus that the light that was predicted and um, prophesied about Isa from Isaiah uh, is now coming into the world. He is that true light that Isaiah spoke of. And Jesus is the great light that will, that will illuminate, uh, be an illumination, a light for all those people who are walking in darkness. And later on, Jesus would take up the idea himself uh, of being the true light. Because uh, in John chapter 8, and verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. John is telling us right at the start of his account of the life of Jesus, that Jesus is the true light. Now, I don't know about where you live, but Romney Marsh is not renowned for having brilliant street lighting. Uh, the number of times that I make the journey from the centre to my home and that, and uh, I, the, it, it, at the best it can be described as patchy, the street lighting, in, when you're in, walking in the dark. There's sort of like a pool of light, and then there's a great bit of darkness, and then you come to the next pool of light. And, that. and so many of us carry around our own personal private street lighting. Here's, here's part of my street lighting uh, that I carry around so that when I'm walking along, I can see where I'm going. Actually, I can see my notes a bit better as well. Uh, the other thing I carry is a, a torch. Um, and the reason we carry these lights is that, that we, we want to light our way. We want to be able to see where we're going. We don't want to trip up or fall over or anything like that. We don't want to come to any harm as we walk between these pools of street lighting. And the Bible is telling us that we all need light, not a, not a physical light in that sense, but we all need a, a light of some sort uh, to guide us through life to show us the way that we should go and to help us to get to our uh, final destination. And that's why we have so many references to light at Christmas time. That's why we put lights on our Christmas tree. That's why we put lights on our houses. That's why we have candles in, uh, in, in, around our houses at Christmas time. Because it reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. There are lots of lights that we could use to guide us through lights. But uh, metaphorical lights I'm talking about here. But they're not the true light. And John is announcing to everyone, including us, that the true light, that is Jesus Christ, the baby born in Bethlehem, visited by shepherds who themselves were nearly blinded by the bright light of the angels who came into the sky, the baby who was later visited by the Magi, oh, and they too were vis guided by the light of a star, have, that this baby is the true light of the world who is shining into the darkness. And what this means for us today, now on the 20th of December, 2020, at the end of this difficult year that we have all just been through, is that there is one called Jesus Light, Jesus Christ, who has come into the world as a light so that we are no longer stumbling around in the darkness through our lives. And instead, if we follow him, he will guide us and show us the right way to live our lives. So that is the light of the world. Now the second phrase that John uses is the word, is the word, the word. And uh, we find this in verse 14, where it says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. When G John tells us that the word became flesh, we need to remind ourselves of what he's already said in verses 1 to 4. 
where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was light, life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So let's just break it down for a moment of what, what John is actually saying to us here. That the one who was there at the beginning of all creation became a human being. Flesh and blood, just like you and me. The one who was with God, dwelt in God's presence, was now born into the world. The one who was and is God was alive as a baby, lying in a manger in Bethlehem. The one through whom all things were created had himself taken on flesh and blood and anyone who cared to look could see God lying there as a baby and later could see God who lived and worked and taught people who were around him as well. And then the, the one who is life, that is the thing that distinguishes us from all inanimate objects, was breathing in air, needed to be fed his mother's milk, needed to be kept safe, and needed the love of human parents. And this is a flavour of what John means when he said, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. This is whose birth we are remembering at this time of year. How do you know if something that happened in the past is true or not? Well, any good historian will tell you to study carefully the evidence that is available, the historical evidence that is available. And some of the most important pieces of historical evidence that we have about past events are those first-hand accounts. People who were there and who saw these things happening and could write them down. And historians agree that the New Testament is an accurate historical document. So when John tells us in the second half of verse 14 that he saw with his own eyes the person who has just who has been described as the word made flesh he is describing to us that he has seen it he's seen this person and that what we have here is an accurate historical document of somebody who was around now what John tells us in the second half of verse 14 is that he saw with his own eyes the person who he has just described as the Word made flesh. The Christmas story is not a made-up fantasy tale, but a carefully recorded historical event. The Word really did become a baby, born in Bethlehem, probably in a cave where they kept the animals. This baby really was visited by shepherds who left their sheep to come and go and worship the Son of God. Wise men called Magi really did follow the star and presented him with gifts of gold, of frankincense and of myrrh. And later when John wrote his uh, account of, of Jesus' life, he includes this very important phrase for us today. We have seen. Notice he puts it there in the plural. Not I have seen, but we have seen. Others around me have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John is telling us that when the baby grew into a man and began his work of healing the sick, making the blind see, making the deaf hear, the dumb speak, of teaching people about the kingdom of God. John was there and saw these things with his own eyes. And John and Matthew both wrote down what they saw the adult Jesus doing. The sort of things that you would expect the Son of God to do when he comes to earth. So John tells us that the baby whose birth we are celebrating is the true light that has come into the world, and that he is the word that has been made flesh. Now in our drama that we saw earlier in the service, uh, Sue concluded by saying, special little baby boy, 
I wonder who this little baby boy is. I would love to meet him. Maybe I could find out about him. And the good news is that you and I can find out about him because people have written down what they heard and saw in the Bible so that you and I can find out and know Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the true light, the Word made flesh. And that's what we're celebrating this Christmas, that you and I can know him as a real person as God made flesh for us. Amen. This brings our first online candlelit carol service to a close. And uh, normally at this point we would uh, all go to our mince pies and our mulled wine and spend some time together. We're not able to do that. But maybe you'd like to give somebody a ring or, or video chat them or something like that uh, and just spend some time uh, fellowshipping with them. I'd like to just finish now by saying a prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we've been able to meet like this tonight. And we pray now that you would be with us through this Christmas period. We pray that you will keep each of us safe, Lord. You will protect us, but you will also help us and enable us to remember what Christmas is really all about. It's the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, coming into this world to be our Saviour. Help us to remember that you are the light of the world and that you have given yourself to us to be our saviour. Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit, we pray, your Holy Spirit, and enable us to celebrate your birth at this time of year. And we pray this now in the name of Jesus. Amen. A very happy Christmas to you. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.